Good morning, church. How are you doing? Going well? Why don't you stand? And if you see somebody around you, won't you just tell them God loves you this morning? And say hi to them. Let's just welcome each other. So we still have some people coming in from the foyer. So this morning, as you can see, we are a tiny team on stage. But a tiny team doesn't mean it should be tiny worship. Do you guys agree? Yes. And I want to remind you this morning that worship is not the size of the band or how loud the drums can play or how loud the electric guitars play. Worship is a condition of the heart. Yes. So we're going to come to God's throne this morning. And I'm I'm reminded of what's in Hebrews where God says, you can come now boldly to the throne of grace. So no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done wrong, no matter how your heart may be stormy or troubled this morning, no matter what you said that you feel regret for, you can still come to God with boldness. That's what Jesus came to do. So we're gonna spend some time worshiping God this morning. We have quite an exciting service for you. And we know that we're going to see God move today. So let's just close our eyes and turn our hearts to God for a second. Father, thank you so much that we can come to you just as we are. And that you know each one of us by by our name. And that you created us, Lord, because you love us, because you want a relationship with us. just want to honor you today for being King of Kings and Lord of Lords, being in control, Lord, even when life might feel sometimes out of control to us. You're just always constant, Lord. You're faithful. You're a rock that we can rely on. There's the Lord of my soul.
wind draws near and my time has come come on church still my soul will sing your praise Say 
you that we can just join together as one voice, as one family and just lift up the name of Jesus. We thank you that we can just come and boldly worship you. Lord, even our best worship isn't enough because you are so good. You are so great. But we can try. And so we just worship you. We lay our lives down before you. We give you everything. We lift your name up over our circumstances, over our friends and family, over our city, over our nation. We just lift your name up. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus, in your name. Everybody said, amen. Amen. Well, feel free to grab a seat just for a moment. I, I firstly want to say a huge welcome to you all. Well done on coming on what is a little bit of a long weekend. We're so glad that you could be with us. Uh, why don't you turn to the person next to you, just say hello. Maybe the person behind you, if you haven't met them, say hello. I want to say a big welcome to everyone who's watching with us online. Pastor Michael is there, ready to chat with you, so make sure you say hello to him. He'd love to see who's watching with us. You're probably on a beautiful holiday somewhere, so we're hoping you're enjoying your time, uh, but we're so glad that you could still join with us this morning, so a big welcome to you. Well, I'd firstly also just like to put a special welcome out to all of our visitors this morning. We're so glad that you have joined with us. We hope that you enjoy this service. But what we really want is for you not to leave the service today as a stranger. We'd really like for you to get to meet some people. And so after the service, across the foyer, we have our Connect Lounge. So if it is your first time or one of your first times, please make sure you head over there. There's an awesome team that would just like to meet you, hear a bit about your story. Uh, and also answer any questions that you might have about us here at Berwick. So please make sure you head there after the service. 
Now, I have a few highlights that I want to share with you, a few things going on in the life of our church. And the first is that on the 6th of November, we have our men's event. Are there any men in the house? Yes, so we have a men's event for you. That is going to be awesome. We have an ex-prisoner, Arthur Bolkus, I think is his last name. He is going to be coming and sharing a bit of his story. Uh, He's got one big story, uh, and he's going to be sharing a bit about what he's learned uh, through his journey um, and how he came to faith. So make sure you come. I'm sure... Ladies, get your husbands along. Men, invite your mates along because that's going to be a really incredible time. So put that one in the diary. And then also, every Sunday at 5.45, we have a men's prayer group. So if you're a man, again, uh, this is open to you. And we'd really like to formally invite you along that this is just such an incredible time where you can come and just pray and get to know some other guys. So make sure you go along to that. That is also going to be an awesome time. Now, can you believe we are coming towards Christmas? I certainly cannot. Uh, It has come really quick. And that means... uh, For some of us, it's a really exciting time, but I think it's important to remember that Christmas isn't always a really easy time for people. In fact, sometimes Christmas is a time that they really struggle. Uh, And on December 5th, we are going to be having an event called Bringing Christmas to Life, where we are going to be inviting our food pantry clients along and pretty much just be pouring out love on them uh, and inviting them into a space where they can celebrate together as a family for Christmas. But this is where we need your help. Because as part of bringing Christmas to life, we would really like to be able to bless our uh, food pantry families with a Christmas hamper, uh, as well as each of the kids with a Christmas present, because otherwise they may not uh, be able to have access to that. Their family can't provide that for them. And so what we would like to ask, if this at all is something that you can help with, what we are looking for is $50 tags. You can purchase a $50 tag at the desk and that will go towards buying a hamper for a family or a $30 tag, which goes towards buying a present for a child. So if that is something at all that you would be able to help with, it would be a huge blessing to our community, to those food pantry families. Uh, And we really, really appreciate your generosity in that. So thank you uh, in advance for that. Now, as you know, we're going through this gospel series and in a couple of weeks we're going to be having two invite Sundays. And so what I'm going to get you to do is turn your eyes to the screen as we watch a little video on inviting people to church. I'm up, I'm up. It's him again. Him who? Him. And all my nervousness, it returns. What I want to say, inside it burns. I just had a message. Go to church with you. We don't care what you wear. Our pastor is funny. We won't ask for money. Who even uses a boom box anymore? Yeah, I'll say anything to get us to go to church. Imagine if you got invited to church like that. Like, (laughs) that is phenomenal. But no, really, that is exactly what not to do when inviting someone to church. Uh, But I think it's really funny because as funny as that video is, I think sometimes we can 
make inviting people to church a really big thing in our heads, right? We think we have to get out the boom box and we have to do this big proposal like, hey, it's this big come to church. But you know what? It's actually as easy as saying when someone says, hey, what are you doing this weekend? And instead of saying, oh, not too much, you go, oh, you know what? I'm actually going to church want to come along. It can be as simple as that. And so we have two invite Sundays coming up. Ken's going to speak more to those soon, but make sure you're inviting your friends, your family along, because they're going to be phenomenal services. Now, right now, we're going to move into a time of communion. So if you have your communion cups, you're welcome to get them out. If you peel the first layer off, that will uh, pull out the piece of bread biscuit. And then if you pull the next layer, that'll get you into the cup. But I want to ask a question. Do you know who you are? Do you know who He is? Sometimes I think without even realising it, we kind of picture our relationship with God in a bit of a wrong light. We kind of think He's here and and I'm over here and and there's this, this distance And I was reading a passage the other day just in my quiet time and something just really hit me. I just was super overwhelmed and I ended up tearing up just in wonder and amazement uh, and just completely overwhelmed with gratefulness. And I want to read the passage um, that I read. And it's found in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. And this is what it says. It says, But when the right time came, God sent His Son, born of a woman, subject to the law, God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. You know, the first thing that hit me when I read this was that God sent Jesus. God sent his son. Now, I've read that a billion times, but but this time when I read it in this passage, it just hit me different because God sent Jesus, his son, so that I could be made his daughter. God sent His only Son so that I could be adopted and made His daughter. So that I could be a part of His family. So that I could be His child. And you see, back then under Roman law, when an adopted adopted child was then guaranteed all legal rights to his father's property, Right? So if you were adopted, you were guaranteed all legal rights to his or her father's property. Even if they were formerly a slave. It didn't matter what background they came from. It didn't matter what they'd been through. And that newly adopted child, say it was a son, that son wouldn't be seen as like a second-class son. That son was seen as an equal son to all of the other children, whether biological or adopted. So when I read that God sent His Son to die for me so that I could be adopted into His family, so that I could be made a daughter, And not just a second-class daughter, a daughter that is to him like Jesus is to him. I couldn't help but just sit there and, and just cry. Because what an incredible privilege and honor that is, that he would choose me, an imperfect, sinful person, to send his son so that I could be part of the family. And that's the reality for each of us in this room and watching online today. God sent His Son so that you could be set free from sin, so that you couldn't, so you didn't have to stay a slave. But you weren't just forgiven and you didn't just find freedom, you were also adopted into His family. 
He sees you as His son, as His daughter. And so as we take communion today, as a family, let's reflect together. Let's reflect on that reality of what God did for us and what that means for you personally. Let's eat. Let's drink together. we just thank you that you adopted us into your family that we can sit here and just spend time communing with you Lord we thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross that that would set us free from being slaves to sin but that would also welcome us into your family that we would also get to call you our father that we would be sons and daughters sitting alongside you Lord as as we continue to worship this morning would that just be made so known in our hearts Lord that we would just be able to worship you just from a place of complete gracefulness an overwhelming sense of just love and adoration for you in your name. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue in worship, so why don't you stand with me and let's continue worshipping our God together. So we're just going to sing over what Jenny just said, just confirming that with our own voices.
wonderful God. We worship you this morning, Lord. God of the universe. El Shaddai, God Almighty, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. We worship you this morning, Lord. We exalt you this morning, Lord. Because you are worthy of praise. For thou, O Lord, thou
of every circumstance. I exalt Thee above every tribulation.
thank you that we can shout a thousand hallelujahs, a thousand praise God, you are awesome. Lord, we could tell a thousand stories of what you've done. You're such an awesome God, and I thank you that even over the next few weeks, there'll be more stories, more stories of you transforming lives, setting people free, having people find peace and hope and freedom and healing. Thank you, God. We shout a thousand hallelujahs. Hallelujah. Yes. Okay, great. Please be seated. I actually don't need that. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> All right. Just as we're getting a few things set up, let me run you through uh, what's been happening. Uh, if you are joining online, you're in the middle of a series, a gospel series, where the pressure is off and you can experience the release. So uh, today I will be modeling a gospel presentation. And on Cup Day, Tuesday, and then on Thursday night, we're going to do four lots of training. So if you'd like to be trained in what you see today, then come along. So we've got 8.20 in the morning, Tuesday morning. We've got an 11 o'clock, 7.20 at night, and again Thursday night. So there are two-hour sessions of training. And uh, we'll give you little booklets like this, which is the same as what you'll see modelled. You'll have a PowerPoint link if you want to use a PowerPoint like you'll see I'll be using today. I want to begin with an illustration, and it's about a story that Jesus told about a farmer who went out to sow seed, to sow seed in the paddock. So out he goes, and he goes different places, and he's got his bag of seed, and he starts casting his seed out, and some of it just lands on a path that's hard and trodden down. The seed can't penetrate the soil, so the birds come and just eat it away. But he doesn't give up. He keeps sowing his seed. And then he casts his seed out in another direction, and some of it falls on soil, but it's very shallow soil with rock underneath it. And this rock means the, the, the seed sprouts up, but as soon as the sun comes, it begins to wither and die, and that plant doesn't survive. Then he keeps casting out his seed. He still doesn't give up and he throws his seed out and then he, it lands in some good soil but this soil is full of weeds and the weeds begin to choke out the soil, that choke out the life of that seed. But then he keeps pursuing and he keeps going and he finds some seed and he throws it out again and this time it lands in good soil and it begins to sprout up and grow a hundredfold what had been sown. Now, I've got my bag of seed here, so is there anyone that is receptive to the gospel seed? Do I have anyone receptive? Oh, someone down the back is receptive. You're receptive, okay. Anyone else receptive for the gospel seed? I've got two so far. Anyone else? Okay, two right down the front here. Okay, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. I've got my gospel seed and this gospel seed is wonderful stuff. It's covered in lint chocolate. <laughs> covered in lint chocolate. Hang on, I've got to go to the people that put their hand up first, right down the back here. Oh, there we go. Someone over here, yes. The gospel seed, there you go. Wonderful stuff. <laughs> okay, is that how the sower sows the seed in this story? No, he doesn't wait to see whose heart is responsive to the gospel. He just begins throwing seed everywhere and, and saying, hey, this is good seed. Help yourself any time. God's got something special for you. You just need to open your heart and say yes. Okay, more gospel seed. Let's see if we can get rid of some gospel seed. Wonderful stuff. Duck, it might hit you on the head. Please forgive me. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, whoa. <laughs> okay, gospel seed, who, who's missing out? All right. <laughs> okay. There you go. 
one for you, Christian. <laughs> In the parable of that, the, the sower of the seed, he didn't prejudge people's heart before he de- determined who he would sow the gospel seed to. Sometimes we fall into the trap of saying, well, I wonder if they'd be interested. I wonder if they'll be responsive. We're looking for good soil, but that's not our job to determine and judge the condition of the heart. I'll get my breath back. (laughs) Our job is simply to sow the gospel seed. And if you want to be equipped in that, come on Tuesday, two hours or Thursday night. Okay, tonight, oh, I've, I've got to tell you, that's right, I've got to tell you about the two guest Sundays, the two invite Sundays. So next week, Michael Rahalis will preach a really safe gospel message to do with where we're overwhelmed by the pressures of society and culture, and is there a counterculture way of doing life? So Michael will preach next week, I'll preach the following week, and it will be about overcoming, because one of the greatest pressures people face is actually spiritual-based pressure that can affect their mind, their emotions, their health, their well-being, their relationships. And I'm going to tackle that head-on and contrast the difference between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And we'll be praying for people to get set free. So I'm already inviting people that need major breakthrough. We're believing God will bring encounters that will set captives free. You bring the people, and let's trust God to do what only God can do. Well, today we're a very special day. Because we've invited a guest along who wouldn't normally come to church, and that's Sean. And Sean, why don't you come up? And uh, this is an old high school mate, old high school mate of... Matt Daniels, come on up, grab a seat. Yeah, pick up the mic, thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) Now, this isn't what you would normally be doing on a Sunday morning, I believe. No, no, it is not. (laughs) Um, But I've been enjoying it so far. Oh, good, that's a good sign. You haven't run out of the building. No, no, I haven't, no. (laughs) Very nervous, but... Very nervous, okay. Well, just... Pretend these people aren't here. In a moment, we'll dim the lights a little bit so you don't have to see them so much. (laughs) I'll try my very best. (laughs) So is this the first time that Matt's invited you uh, Uh, along to church? No, Matt's invited me numerous times. Not not a lot of times, but um, Matt certainly doesn't push, but he has asked me times and... And so you've gone every time when he's invited you? Well, he's never offered me as good an offer as this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, instead of hiding up the back, you're on front stage in front of everyone. Okay, exactly. that's what was needed. Okay, that's how you get people along. <laughs> um, and I've always been open to, the, um, to coming. I'm not against it. Um, but I've always just had an excuse or, you know, yes. always thought of something that I, why I can't come. And, um, <laughs> And I'll, but I said to my sister, you know, three or four weeks ago when it's like, you know what, I'm, I think I want to do that. I want to, I'm interested. Wow. That's so fantastic. what, so what happens, on. yeah. So, so, Sean, this is the first day I've ever met you in person. Mm-hmm. And these guys watching have no idea who you are. Mm-hmm. So just maybe in 30 seconds, tell us something about, about yourself. And okay. Um, I'm 48. I'm single. Um, I work in a warehouse as a in with a concrete um company love my footy coach local footy junior footy yeah um played footy all my life um and yeah just uh got into spirituality a little bit in my 30s trying to find the meaning of life i guess yeah um and yeah just interested in life i guess it'd be okay, a way, way of good way of saying thing yeah so so for you sean if if god was real would you see yourself as someone who's distant to god or close to god i have an interesting relationship with god <laughs> um 
I would say distant. Yeah. But at times, I pray and okay, great. Go to God, I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my day to day life, I would say, probably distant would be. Pretty distant. Yeah. So, yeah. if you could know God personally, would that be something of interest to you? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'm interested in finding out whether that's real or not yeah great yeah appreciate your openness and vulnerability mm. as well here today sean thank you no worries well i'd like to present to you uh, a presentation that looks at it's called three paths and it's about exploring options for life so and then in that how to know god personally so along the way you can ask any question you like nothing's off limits you can respond however you're comfortable with. Okay. okay. Now, you, you may have heard of the expression, we live in a broken world or something like that. And it basically, the brokenness or the mess in the world comes about primarily because of people's choices and actions and choices and mistakes that we make as well. Mm -hmm. And this leads to the, the brokenness. And so the big question that this raises is, is it possible that our life can flourish and thrive despite what others or ourselves have done or failed to do? Is there some way we can shift from the experience of brokenness and actually experience life as it's meant to be? Now, because we live in such a world, people tend to find, try and find the best option or path for life, just like you did in your 30s, trying to find, you know, what, what's it all mean? How do I get this to work? And so I'm going to talk about three major options or paths. And as I do that, I invite you to look out for which pathway that you relate and identify with most. So the first option is basically to go my way, which is, well, I make up the rules. You know, I try to somehow get control of things in life, even though ultimately we don't have control. And then if it's not working and it's then I find a way, how do I fix it? How do I fix myself, someone else? How do I feel, fix the circumstances? And then sometimes we give up on that and we say, well, I just want to escape. I want to numb out the pain. I just want to move on to something else, a new situation, new relationship, whatever. Our different ways of trying to make life work. Can you think of any examples for you, Sean, where you, what you've seen that illustrate this? <clears throat> um, I had a... Uh tumultuous relationship with my father for a long time okay. um, which I tried to control um, and I couldn't even be in the same room with him for a long period of wow, my life. Wow, that's huge. Um, but to fix that I forgave him oh, wow. um, which took a lot. I didn't at the start I didn't forgive him for him, I forgave him for me. Yeah. Um, which is one of the most powerful things I've ever done and now I have a I have a strong relationship with him and that forgiveness went now goes both ways yeah. so wow yeah, that's, that, that, that's probably yeah the example I could think of yeah wow powerful powerful example so something that was seriously broken but through the gift of forgiveness some restoration could take place yeah yeah and my dad's a funny man and he doesn't even understand that I forgave him but it doesn't matter, right? Because <laughs> was, I needed to it fix was, it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great, Sean. Awesome, so powerful. A variation to option one is sometimes people tap into spiritual energies or forces like the New Age or the occult. And part of it is trying to say, well, how do I get some control in this world I don't control? Or how do I get some strength or help, some divine energy to try and fix things? But sometimes this side is actually a dark side of spirituality and it ultimately leads to greater brokenness and greater darkness. You, you've seen that? Experienced it. You've yeah, experienced it. Yeah. yeah. I was talking to Matt last night and I've read 30, 40 self-help books. Yeah. And I sort of went down that path. Um, and in the end, I, I wasn't getting anything out of it. It was just sort of a perpetual motion of trying to yes. get something, yeah. Um, I don't know whether it was darkness, but I, I certainly, I got some good things out of it, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can see that it's not what I needed, but yes. it helped me along the way, yes. absolutely helped me along yes. the way, yeah. There's certainly um, 
often short-term fixes, but ultimately it doesn't lead to the life we're looking for. Could, uh, 100% yep. agree with that. Yep. Yep. Okay, yep. great. All right, a second option that we could choose, uh, sorry, if we are to choose my way, we often find ourselves thinking along these lines. I will be the master of my own destiny. You know, no one will tell me what to do. You know, I will succeed. I will not be like my father or my mother or, you know, I'll prove my worth. I'll hide my pain. That's so poignant, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah, you had already stated that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, a second option is to actually go our way. Instead of my way, our way. What do I mean by this? It's I try to follow external rules and expectations. Now, this can come through family, pressure from family to conform a certain way. It can come through culture and society of this is how you behave and look and if you don't fit in well. You know. And it can come through religion. Each of these can be very powerful versions of the our way option of life. But the subtle message we tend to pick up is if you do it our way, you'll be accepted and seen as a good person. But if not, you might experience shame and rejection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you were to choose this option for life, Sean, our way, you would find yourself thinking along the lines, I should be a better person, you know, I should fix myself up, you know, I should be more giving or loving, I should do more, you know, pray or go to the temple or whatever the thing is we're meant to do. Or I just have to try harder. Now, everyone wants to feel good about themselves, to be accepted. But what emotion is this person likely to experience? Um, For me, it's the the control of that would be for me to reject all of that. Run from it. Go away from it, right? Yeah. Um, Culture, religion. I grew up in a Catholic church. Um, and I, as soon as I was 15 or 16, old enough to say to mum and dad, I'm not going anymore, yes. I couldn't get out of there fast enough because I felt that pressure yes. that this is the way you had to okay. behave. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's how many people feel in any of these forms of the our way mindset because mm. what it does, it, it often makes you feel guilty or shamed or condemned or you're just exhausted. You say, well, I try really hard and then I'll stuff it. And then it often tends to, well, I don't want anything more to do with yep. it. Yep. Yeah, I feel controlled. Now, the third option is actually to go God's way. Now, Sean, if you were to choose this path, it could lead to a relationship with God where you can know God personally. And that can overflow into restoration. Just as you experienced the power of restoration when you forgave your dad, when we experience God's forgiveness, it can begin a process of restoration where we can experience healing and freedom and old habits and addictions can break off. And that then leads us on a process where we start to experience life as God designed it. That's the incredible thing about this. Now, with God's way, it's not focused on I will... (laughs) Or even I should. It's not focused on trying harder, keeping external rules or doing more. It is focused on what he did and still does so I can experience life and life in abundance. Now we'll come back to that. But for now, um, from what you're beginning to understand, which path most represents your life? My way, our way, God's way at this point in time? Um, I'm probably our way more than anything, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I should. Yeah. 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 So there's probably sometimes, I think we've all been there at different times. Yeah. But this has also been part of your journey. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a big part of my life for a long time. Okay. And I'm moving more. All right. Yeah. Okay. I think you've already given some examples. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Along the way, what that looks like. Um, You know... Uh, the last couple of years I've seen a lot of I I don't want to call it evil but I've seen a lot of bad you know like with everything that's been going on in the world and with that badness 
I feel like there's a lot of good on the other side of that, you know? Yes. And that's where I'm sort of more okay, coming that, that way. Wow. Yeah. yeah. A, a friend of mine, Sean, he, he had experienced something that he knew evil was real. Mm. And out of that, he, at that time, it wasn't a church gower at all. Mm. And out of that, he said, if evil's real, then maybe God's real. It's got to be, right? And that's, then that's why the, I think, yeah. The, yeah. Then he went on a journey to explore, mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. And that's probably where I'm at right now, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's take you further on the journey. <laughs> now, to appreciate the third option, Sean, it's actually important to understand that what God's original design for mankind was. Because the Bible reveals God as this all-powerful, benevolent, good king. And he created the entire universe to provide a perfect habita habitation for us to live. And when God set up his design of how life was to work, his heart was actually to protect us from brokenness. But out of love, he gave us a free will that we can choose any path we like, but that path can lead to various things. Now, in the very beginning, the first man and woman, as they followed God's way for life, they experienced harmony, harmony with each other, harmony with God, harmony with all of creation. And they, as a result, experienced life as God designed it. There was no brokenness. There was no sin, no suffering, no evil, no sickness, no death. It was perfect. But one day they made the decision that said, well, I don't really want to keep going God's way. I want to make the decisions as if I'm king and master. I want to go my own way. And this is what the Bible calls sin, and sin always moves towards brokenness, some kind of effect in our lives or others' lives. So we come back to that big question. Is it actually possible that our life can flourish despite experiencing brokenness? Is there some way back to God's design for life? Well, there's good news, Sean. <laughs> God had a plan for this messed up world. <laughs> God is a personal relational being who's been seeking relation with it, relationship with us our whole life. For God so loved the world, the Bible says, that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world, this messed up world, to condemn the world, no, but to save the world through him. And so when Jesus came to earth, he was the only one who ever lived without sin. He, because he perfectly lived by his father's design, God's way for doing life. He was without sin. And when he came across brokenness, he would do something about it. He would heal people's bodies. He would set their minds free. He would bring release over their emotions. In fact, he would forgive their sin and that would release them from guilt and condemnation and open up a door for restoration as you've tasted with your father. And he offered life, Jesus offered life, not based on religion or an external set of rules that we have to somehow perform to. He offered that life available through him. He put it this way, I am the way or the path. I am the path and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to a relationship with God where we know God personally. And this leads to life but the religious leaders of Jesus day they were focused on a different path it was the our way the religious path of how you meant to perform to so-called be acceptable mm. to God mm. and because of that they hated literally hated what Jesus was saying and doing and as a result despite Jesus having never sinned only ever doing good out of jealousy they had him killed on a cross but what they didn't realise, Sean, is that was God's ultimate plan to deal with sin and to deal with brokenness. They buried him in a tomb, but three days later, the power of God raised him back to life. And through that, proving Jesus was God's son and his words are true. Now, because Jesus is alive, he can still bring healing today. He can still set people free. And there's a verse from 
Hebrews in the Bible, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I've got, this is a real practical question. For you, Sean, do you have any need of healing or freedom? Sometimes we see people with back trouble healed or pain or breathing difficulties. So, um, Yeah, well, healing, absolutely. Um, I have a lot of issues with my gut and okay. uh, skin issues, and um, which is why I eat the way I do and live the yes. way I do, is to okay. try and control that as yes. much as I can. Trying to manage it. Yeah, yeah. That's a constant day-to-day struggle for me. Yes. Yeah. So okay. I'm a vegetarian and try and eat as much as good food okay. as I can but yeah it's every Ob- day. obviously that would be something if we prayed for you you would only be able to tell later if there's a real result wouldn't mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. would you be okay if I was to pray for you right now I just sitting here I just pray for you absolutely so it's the gut issue and the skin issue are the two big ones yep. for you yep. let me pray Jesus I thank you for Sean I thank you that he's on a journey trying to make sense of this world And Lord, he needs a miracle in his body. I command whatever is causing those gut issues to leave his body. And I release healing of Jesus into his body right now. I speak life into his skin that whatever allergies or reactions, Lord, I declare life. That his skin would become more subtle, more tender. Lord, without the reactions. We release healing in Jesus' name. Okay. So I'd love to hear back later whether there's any change change at all. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So no matter what the area of brokenness, Jesus is able to exchange our broken life or the consequences of sin of ourselves or others and bring us to a place of life. Jesus actually put it this way. Come to me, all you who are weary, and burdened and I will give you rest when we're burdened by the mess of life and the mess that happens we can find freedom when we're weary when we're just tired of trying and striving we can come into a rest a rest unlike any other option of life Mm. that's what Jesus is offering no matter where you're at so regardless as I said where you're at which path you're on out of those three options, which path would you like to be on, Sean? Which path would I like to be on? Um, Regardless of where you are now. Oh, sorry. You're all right. Um, oh, that's a tough question. I don't know. Um, I feel like I... Sh- this confuses me. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. Um, what what question comes to mind, or where do you feel it's confusing for you? Um, so he did. I guess my question is, he did what? what yeah. Is is um, do I follow? What what path do I follow? Yes. What do I is? What does that look like? If you were like? to go down, yeah, that yeah, path? yeah. So I, I don't know what that means. Okay. Yeah. All right, let let me unpack that. There's probably two sides to your question. One is to make sense of what Jesus did on that cross and how that affects us. Mm -hmm. The second one is, okay, if I do choose God's path, practically, how do I do that? Mm. So are they both legitimate questions for you? Um, I I understand the, the... the dying on the cross thing. And okay, the exchange. The, what yeah, I did. understand that. Okay. Um, but I, yeah, I, I don't understand a day to day how right. how that looks like. Okay, yeah. let let me unpack that a little bit. But feel free to keep asking questions and pushing me yep. until you feel you've got some clarity. Is that okay? okay yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. So this question is: Well, how do we enter God's path? And this starts that process. Jesus put it this way, the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe the good news. And see, God's, the kingdom is actually God's way for living life, living life in the power and character of God. That's what Jesus is offering, a way to get back to how God designed life. But for us to be able to enter it, there's two shifts going on here, repent and believe. So let's have a look at what that means. 
Repent means to change one's thinking and direction. So instead of running my life by my way, where I'm in the driver's seat, I determine where I go and what's right and wrong and the decisions I make, and instead of going based on our way by external rules and parameters, I want to turn from that and actually commit my life to going God's way by his design. So let's ha- ha- unpack that a bit further. The next step is believe to put complete trust in what Jesus did on the cross to take all my sin and brokenness and exchange it for life. So instead of putting trust in me, like if I'm sitting on this chair, if this chair represents my life, it's like I'm putting my whole trust in me. But faith is something where we put our trust in Jesus and what he's done to offer us life. Mm -hmm. Jesus put in these words, I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. So it's offered as a gift, not something we earn, not something we we work up to. Here's an interesting one. In the Bible, the first step for anyone who repents and believes is to be immediately baptised in water. And you say, well, what's that got to it? Let me try and explain that. But first is scripture. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news, the gospel of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptised, both men and women. And so baptism is the way we demonstrate and experience the decision to leave the old way of living life and enter the new life in Christ. Just as Jesus died, was buried, and then rose to new life by God's power, so we can experience the same. So as I say, God, I want to die to my old way of life. And we enter into the water of baptism, buried under the water, then the Bible says by faith we come up and we step into this new life that we learn a new way of living, if you like. Mm -hmm. And so, hang on, I'll go back for a moment. Any questions or comments so far on what I'm covering? Because there's a fair bit there. No, no, I understand. uh, It's very similar to... I I sort of grew up with that, so I understand. Yes. Fully I understand it. Whether I believe it is another, yeah. you know, I, I, I get it, yeah. but the next step is the biggest step, I guess, is that leap of yeah. faith, I guess, if you want to use that word. Yeah. Okay, let, let me take you to the next one. And this is coming back to the three paths of my way, our way, and God's way. What is needed? What do you understand is needed? If you were to take that decision to go God's way, what is needed for you to enter God's path? Um, I guess I would need proof, if there's such a thing. Yes. (laughs) Like, how do you prove it? But um, I know that, you know, I'm not going to see Jesus or I'm not going to see God, but I... To me, it's it's almost there, but I want to I want to see proof of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. I don't, but I don't know how you how do I get to that proof? Okay. So it, there's something that you find attractive in what you're hearing, and you know you're moving in that direction. But it's like, can I really believe? Can I really mm. trust my life? Absolutely. To this? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Open to it. Yes. No problems. But how do I know? Okay, so if I was to put this question, is there anything stopping you from telling right now, telling God right now that you would like to follow this path for life? What I'm hearing you saying is, I want this path, but I don't know whether I can fully trust it and fully take that step of surrender and 100%. trust. 100%. Yep. Okay. I'm going to highlight a prayer that at any point you're ready, you could pray. And I'm going to talk about some other options Uh, if you're not quite ready for this. But I think this is important, at least for you to understand the kind of response that we can come to. Mm -hmm. And it says, Jesus, I'm tired of trying to make life work by finding my own path in life and living by external rules. I choose to believe that you died on a cross for the sin of going my own way and for the wrong choices I've made. In particular, I ask you to forgive me for... And then we just allow people just time just between them and God if there's things they want to put right with God thank you for setting me free from guilt thank you I can now enter a personal relationship with you 
From now on, I'm willing to turn back to your path and make you my rightful king, to learn to follow your design for my life. I ask you to begin the journey of healing any brokenness in my life, and when I die, to know for certain that I have eternal life. Now, I'm not going to um, put you on the spot, uh, especially in front of everyone. Pressure's off, okay? Okay. But there will be people watching online, there will be people here this, this morning, that maybe as you've listened to this conversation with Sean, you're sitting there saying, I'm ready for this, this is what I want. So I would like to just lead through this prayer. And if you're here this morning or you're watching online, live or in the future, I invite you to pray this prayer. And so just, we'll just do it quietly. I will lead through the words and you can just say it quietly in, in your own heart. Let me do that. Jesus, I'm tired of trying to make life work by finding my own path in life and living by external rules. Just You pray that along, you can follow the words or follow me. I choose to believe that you died on a cross for the sin of going my own way and for the wrong choices I've made. In particular, I ask you to forgive me for and just... Spend some time between you and God. Anything that you know you need to put right. We'll continue. Thank you for setting me free from guilt. Thank you I can now enter a personal relationship with you. From now on, I am willing to turn back to your path and make you my rightful king to learn to follow your design for my life. I ask you to begin the journey of healing any brokenness in my life and when I die to know for certain that I have eternal life. Okay. I'll, I'll in, later I'll come back and speak to those that maybe prayed that prayer today. But let me just highlight three responses, Sean. This is typical in the Bible. When people first heard this gospel message, this good news of how we can get right with God, how we can enter into life in abundance, there's three main responses. Some just said, no thanks. Some actually ridiculed <laughs> Others said, well, I'm not quite ready to take that step, but I, I want to hear more. And others said, yes, I'm ready. I, I want to repent. I want to believe. I, I want to leave my old life behind in baptism. And those people often experienced God empowering them. They were then sharing and telling others. They also uh, joined into a community of believers because God never designed this life to be lived alone and for us trying to work it out on our own. He wants us to be with others that will help us and encourage us to experience all that this life has. So here's a couple of options either for yourself or for those that are watching. We can meet further to talk more about this and I'm sure Matt would love to <laughs> sit down and continue this conversation and I'm happy to. And you can share this message with family and friends and, and there's a lot to take in today, Sean, but I want to give you a couple of copies of, of this. Yep. That Thank you. is basically the same as the PowerPoint slides, but everything I've been verbally adding to it is also in there as well. Okay. So you can yep. read it and take it at your pace and digest it. Share it with others. When you're ready, or for others who have taken this step, you can be baptised. You could do an eight-week Search to Find course. That's a course we run here, Discovering Spiritual Reality, Faith, God and Supernatural Power. But there's another great option, that's the Alpha course. We also run that one here. But if you say we're to get connected to a church somewhere near you, find one that runs Alpha. It's all over the world. It's one of the most incredible courses to help people explore how, how do I step into this new life okay. and you know, how do I respond to that. 
And of course, you can read for yourself the stories of Jesus in English or any other language by just going to some of the online Bible. I tried reading the Bible years and years ago. I, I couldn't make any sense of it, right? I'd need to be able to... It needs to be broken down for me. Yes, and that's what Search and Alpha does. Yeah, right. It breaks it down. Yeah. But one of the best prayers you can pray is just say, God, I'm still trying to work out if you're real. I don't know quite how to get to this place of faith. But as I read the Bible, as I do this course, would you reveal yourself to me in a way that I know your words are true? And if you do that, I'd be prepared to follow your path. And Jesus himself makes a guarantee that says that if we're willing to do the Father's will, we will know that his words have come from God. So if you have that hard attitude, God will bring the revelation to you as you go on this journey. So awesome. Let's put our hands together to thank Sean. Incredible courage. Well done. If you prayed that prayer today, if you're watching online and you prayed that prayer, we would love to know and we'd love to journey with you further. Um, Time to time we run these courses and we encourage you to step into that. We also have a prayer team this morning, the Encounter Prayer Team. They will stand and pray with anyone for any need. You could have a sore toe, come forward, get some prayer. But if you prayed that that prayer of salvation that I, I led in before, then I invite you to come forward and when you're speaking to the Encounter team, just say, hey, I prayed that prayer. And we'd love to give you your own copy of the three paths booklet. And for those that come to the training, you'll get the booklets, you'll get the PowerPoint version. Uh, So sign up for that. That would be great. Let, Let me just pray. Father, I just thank you for the incredible words of truth, the gospel that transforms lives and communities. Help us to be seed sowers. Help us to have confidence in this good news. That's good news for everyone, regardless of the background. And Lord, for those that are on a journey like Sean, I pray, Lord, as they open up their heart, that you would bring the revelation truth that they need to be able to take that step of trust, surrender, and leave off the old so they can step into the incredible new that you have for them. Why don't you just stand? You've been sitting a long time. Just stand for a moment. And if you'd like prayer, just encourage you, prayer team, counter team, you come forward now too. Just come forward for prayer. Come on, just maybe lead us in a song or something. Yeah. Calvin, can you put the words for Revelation song on there, please? I just felt the song the whole time while Ken was was leading this discussion and I was just overwhelmed by the beauty of what Jesus did and the love of God and this song just came on in my heart Worthy is the Come forward for prayer now Lamb who was slain Holy, holy is he
team are going to stay up the front here. If, if there's anything at all that you need prayer for, uh, whether it's something from today's service that's touched you or something completely separate, these guys are going to stay up here. They want to pray with you. So please come forward and uh, receive some prayer. Also, if anything from today uh, has really touched you, We'd really like to hear about it. And you'll see on the screen a a space where you can share your story with us. Again, whether it's from this week or another week, please, we'd love to hear what God's been doing in your world, in your life. So make sure you send us your story. But that does officially conclude the end of our service. As I said, if you want prayer, please keep coming up the front. We'd like to pray with you. But that is the close of our service. So can I encourage you, go be His presence in every place. We'll see you next week. Have a great week.